Um, if you could give me just like what you think is different between like, or what do you think, how would you evaluate Vargas? How do I evaluate, I evaluate Vargas as a, as a young, hungry fighter that's coming up. You know, he's a world champion and he wants, uh, he wants to, he wants to capture another title at 147 pounds in the welterweight division. And I know that he is at the position where Tim Bradley was at one point. An undefeated world champion that is given an opportunity to fight uh, at another division against another name fighter. And he wants to prove the world that he's among the best. So you seem to be suggesting though early on that you don't think Vargas has that much power. Well, don't. Um, I mean, he has 26 fights and he has nine knockouts out of 26. Tim Bradley has 30 and he only has 11. So neither of them have the, the knockout power, but this is more of an endurance kind of, kind of fight, you know? Bradley might not have the power to knock him out, but he has the more endurance to take him into, into deep waters, you know? And I just think that, you know, Vargas doesn't have the experience that, that Tim Bradley has against the oppositions that he's faced. Okay, so you think it's going to be more a question of just that hardness, that mental and physical toughness that Bradley has? Yes, it's just about the physical and mental hardness that Bradley brings to the fight, see if Jesse can deal with it. And you were saying like that there is a difference between you and say then uh, also uh, Roy Jones as a trainer that you think is an edge that you have. Can you kind of tell us about that? Of course. You know, there's an edge because, I mean, not that uh, I know more about boxing than Roy Jones. The only thing is that I've been in the, in the, in the, in the training business more than he has. He is still an active fighter. And uh, he has he has trained Jesse Vargas for one fight only. Jesse has trained with other fighters, and fighters usually have their 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 their, uh, their style already. You know, coming up, they already set their style. And when you have a trainer that, that teaches you one way, and then you got another trainer that teaches you another way, because every trainer trains differently, sometimes it works against you because you get confused. You cannot change a fighter from one fight to another. It could be something that can work on my side, because Roy Jones is going to try to change him, but at the same time, as the rounds go, Jesse's going to fall back into his natural, into his regular style. What do you think his regular style is? Whatever it is, I mean, he, Roy Jones wants him to box. I know he wants him to box, because Jesse Vargas I see him come forward. At points, he's a brawler, but he don't know how to box much. I guess Roy Jones is trying to change him as a boxer, and that's going to be a problem. So, what did you think about the Mayweather versus Pacquiao fight? What you saw is what I thought. I honestly thought that was going to happen. I honestly thought, you know, I've always said it. I've always said it, and this is the way I always said it. Mayweather is a welterweight. He's a bigger man. Pacquiao is a smaller guy. Mayweather is a great boxer, counterpuncher, great reflexes. Manny Pacquiao only looks good when you go hunting for him and you're standing there so he can unload furious your punches. But when you don't have a target in front of you, Manny Pacquiao cannot catch you. And at the same time, Mayweather is a smart fighter, he's a business person, that he was going to dictate the pace of the fight to the point where if he felt that he was going to jeopardize his, his undefeated record, he was going to pick and move, pick and move, rounds in his pocket and walk away with a victory. And that's what he did. I, what did I, actually, I had another question. I wanted to know, like, just, it seems like with you and Bradley, like, you guys change up things so much. Like, he's always reading different things, he's trying so many different things, and, you know, like, you're constantly evolving, like, more than other trainer, like, coach relationships. Like, would you say that that's accurate, or would you say that that's, you know, like, overstated? The, the thing is that uh, Bradley and I bond, because, you know, we have mutual respect for each other, and we never lose that. You know, he believes, he believes highly on me, because I always make the decision that, you know, that will get him to, to win. And I always prove to him. From the beginning of his career, I always told him, Bradley, this is, this is what you need to do. And this is what's gonna happen. And he always says, coach, you were right. And he always tells me, coach, when you tell me, when you tell me what to do when I do it, I'm always good. When I go on my own and do things my way, I always get into problems. And it's always been right, you know, and because I want the best for him and he knows that I've always want the best for him and I want him to be successful and keep winning. Uh, sometimes I ask him to do something in the ring, but sometimes he can't because he's not capable or physically capable of doing it. But other than that, if he does it, he's good. So do you think his versatility then is to do more with something where you're like correcting for injuries know, right? and different things and that's yeah. why? Well, we have to improvise at points. That's why when we're, when we're in the gym, we prepare for all that. That's why we, we don't leave anything behind. When we're at the gym, we train, we prepare, and even for injuries, and there's points in which uh, it, might, it might be silly, but we put a patch on his eye so he can spar with one eye. We switch to the other side and he can spar with one eye. 
You never know. When I get shot, he needs to he needs to finish the fight. You know, there's times in which we have to improvise and do something, and he knows. That's why we prepare for everything. When we leave the gym to a fight, we left everything behind, and we're ready. Is that something that you've honed with him, like being so experimental, or is it something that comes from you? That where it comes from me because, I mean, me as a fighter, I did a lot of things the old way, and they always help. That's what right now for this fight. We're, we're leaving aside a lot of the stuff that he's been doing in his previous fights and we're bringing back the old school way of training, the way I started to train him way before. None of this conditioning, none of these bands, none of these, you know, this, this, this new stuff that a lot of conditioning trainers are doing is bullshit, honestly. I mean, you go back to the old school way, the way the old school fighters, that's what works. You know, a lot of people right now, they're, they're, they'll come up to a gym and say, I'm a, con a strength and conditioning coach. And they bring a bag full of bands and this and this and that. That's bullshit. Honestly, I can tell you that. I mean, everybody wants a job, obviously. They, uh, they're looking for a job, that's what you want. But if you want to train right for a fight, go into, go into the school way. The old school way of training, when you got a medicine ball, when you got a tire, when you got a slash hammer, when you got a wheelbarrow, when you got all that stuff, you know, that's conditioning. That's but training. it seems a little bit then like it's a little bit of contradiction because you say he always listens to you and you guys have a strong bond, but at the same time it sounds like you went through all this conditioning stuff with him and then you kind of had to bring him back, so like you had to convince him. And, and sometimes, he's an adult. He's an adult. He's a professional person. He's a family man. I let him do his things up to a certain extent. If I tell him, hey, don't do that, and something goes wrong, he's going to come around and say, you told me not to. Even when he makes decisions, he made decisions on managers at one point, and even up to now. He asked me, what do you think about this manager? It's up to you. Because if I tell him, yes, sign with this manager, and him and the manager, you know, don't get along, and down the road, he's going to say, you told me to. He's not a kid. He needs to learn how to make decisions though, but up to a certain extent, they'll be like, oh, I'll give him, I'll give him a hand. You know what? You know, this is not the right thing, but it's up to you. So last question, would you say it's more like a father-son relationship you have or more of a friend, like, you know, more... No, it's more like a father-son thing. More like a brother to brother. Because him and I, we are like a family. We are a family. It's not... I see a lot of trainers and fighters, they go party together, they get drunk together. Him and I never do that. Once we do that, we lose respect to each other.